So a couple of days ago, I made a video about Wayland, and in that video, I told you that I finally got Hyperland up and running. And I split the, these two videos in parts simply because I wanted to be more positive in this one. That one was very ranty, very rambly, and I wanted to talk a little bit more positively about Hyperland, and I figured I probably couldn't do that if I spent the entire time bitching about Wayland. So, today, I'm going to be talking about my time with Hyperland. Now, I've been using it now for a little while, and I have some thoughts, and some of them are really good. Some of them are not so good. So, let's go ahead and jump in. Hyperland is overall a very good window manager. And I'm going to call this a window manager even though I know it's a Wayland compositor. You don't have to get in the comments and tell me that I'm calling it something wrong. I'm going to call these things window managers whether you like them or whether you like it or not. So we're just going to bypass that. Let me call it what I wanted to call it and we'll we'll move on. Hyperland is a very good window manager. It is a very customizable window manager. The syntax of the configuration file is very easy to understand, very easy to use. And even if you're going to get into customizing the animations and customizing how the window manager pops up windows and all the stuff that Hyperland can do, doing so in a configure in the configuration file is very easy to do. And the documentation is also very good in that aspect. It does a very good job of guiding you through all the stuff that Hyperland can do. So those two aspects are very, very positive, and I'm very impressed with the fact that it is as full-featured as it is, considering the fact that it is a very new window manager. It's only been around for a little while. Yes, it is based on something that was before, but even the thing that it's based off from hasn't been around that long. When you compare it to other window managers that have been around for 20 years, you have to be somewhat impressed that Hyperland has come as far as it has in the small amount of time that they've been given. So, I'm very impressed with the features that it has. And if you see my Hyperland right here, you'll see that it does a lot of really cool things that I really like. So the animations, I could probably take or leave. To be honest with you, they're a little frivolous, and I don't know if I were to use this long term if I'd keep them. And the thing about all that is, is that if you turn the animations off, you have to consider what does Hyperland give you that, you know, some other window manager doesn't because the animations are a big deal, are a big part of Hyperland. So I haven't turned them off because it does feel like if I turn them off, I'd be taking something away from what Hyperland is supposed to be. To be honest with you, I'd probably at least speed them up because they do kind of, it, it does feel like it, it, slu it makes things a little sluggish. They're not slow by any means. Like if you, if you used GNOME back in the early GNOME three days, you know what slow animations really look like. This is not that. Even at the default settings, which I have them right now, you know, the animations are fine, but you can slow them down in the configuration file. So if I actually show you the Hyperland configuration file, it looks like this. And as you can see, it's just a matter of some regular syntax. There's nothing horrible here. There's no JSON. There's no YAML. It's not in a programming language of any sort. It just works and looks very, very easy. And it comes across that way. It's very well documented as well, too. So it gives you it gives you links to the wiki so you can see more detail about what you're supposed to do in each of these sections, which is really nice. You can source files if you wanted to have a multi-file configuration file. So that's taken care of. That's something that i3 didn't get until like version 4.20. So the fact that they have that built in is really quite awesome. So there are a lot of positives here when it comes to the actual usage. So that I wanted to start off with the positive stuff because there are a lot of things about this that I do really, really like. And I like the rounded corners. I think that's fantastic. I like the fact that you can set two or even three colors for the border. And, ha and if you set up set it up properly, you can have it so that the border is kind of animated so that the gradient kind of goes round and round in circles. That's really cool. Uh, like I said, the rounded corners are, are really nice. It has built-in blur, so you don't have to have, uh, you know, because it's Wayland, you don't have to have a compositor like you would in an Xorg in order to get blur. All that stuff works well. And because it's a Wayland compositor and you don't have to have PyCom setting on top of it, the resource usage is actually really nice when you compare it to something that has PyCon running because all the blur effects, the rounded corners, all the animations and stuff like that is taken care of at, at a lower level, meaning that there's not as much resource usage. It's really quite good. I do like that they have a couple built-in layouts. I think they have three 
maybe only two, but they do have some built-in layouts. And the the default one is a dwindle layout, kind of like a Fibonacci layout. And I switched to the master stack layout, which is the one that I prefer. And these layouts do have some options that you can choose between. So you can change the way the dwindle works. You can change some of the master stuff. And there's more documentation on each of these layouts in the wiki. So you can make some changes to how the actual layout works, which is also really nice. And if you do have a mouse or a trackpad that allows you to do gestures, Hyperland also has support for gestures. I haven't tried these because I don't have a Hyperland on a laptop or anything like that. I'm using it at my desktop. Uh, so I don't know how well those work, but the fact that it has those built in is kind of amazing considering the fact that this is a window manager, not a desktop environment. So having gestures of any kind is not something that you normally see in a window manager. So those are the positive things that I have to say about it. Now, I'm sure there are a few other things like there's nothing like it's been very, very stable over the course of me actually using this. And it's just been a, a nice experience uh, outside of the problem of me having to find new tools to replace all the tools that I used to use. That's not a Hyperland problem. That's a Wayland problem. So if I ignore that part, it's been a very good experience to use once I got it set up and everything. Again, most of that's just a Wayland problem, not a Hyperland problem. And it's, it's been, it's just been a good experience. So let me talk about a, th a few of the things that I'm going to consider bad. I'm going to quote unquote bad. Uh, and most of these aren't bad. They're just signs of a immature window manager. I would put that, it, put it that way. I have a feeling that as the window manager progresses a little bit, these things will get a little bit better. And also as Wayland becomes more popular in the window manager space, this stuff will get better. So the first one and the biggest one that I'm going to say is scratch pads. Now I'm a big scratch pad guy. Like I like scratch pads more than anybody else. And I'll fight anyone who claims to have the scratch pad king title. That's me. You can't have it. So I like scratch pads a lot on, on Qtile. I have 12 different scratch pads for different things. I use them all and it's fantastic. I, I have key bindings for all those things. Like I can hit super V and bring up pulse mixer. I can bring up super C to bring up ranger. I can use super shift B to bring up Newsboat. You know, I have super N and super shift N both for separate terminals. I have super M for MPD. You get the point, right? I have a ton of scratch pads. Scratch pads aren't well supported in Hyperland yet. Now they do have the functionality to get there, but it's not quite there yet. Now they do a very half-assed job of kind of copying the way i3 does scratch pads. Now on, on i3, the base functionality of scratch pads is that you have a window that's here, right? You have a, a window that you've, you've launched. You press a key binding, it sends it to the scratch pad workspace, which is hidden. And then you can press another key binding that brings it back up, right? That's the way by default scratch pads work in i3. That's the same way they work in Hyperland. And if you are not a big scratch pad type person and you just want to have that minimized space for your windows or whatever and you want to kind of treating it treat it as minimizing a window that can work for some people but it's not the way that i use scratch pads i like to launch my applications on startup have them launch inside of the scratch pad workspace and then bring them up with a key binding and then send them back to the workspace when i'm done with them whatever's in those windows continues to run inside of the invisible workspace. That's the way that I like doing that. Now, Hyperland can do that, but it's hacky. Uh, you have to use a lot of window rules in order to get those things to work. And it's just not as good as you'd want it to be. It's very, you know, to be honest with you, it's very, very close in that aspect to i3, because in i3, you also have to have a lot of rules in order to set up scratch pads the way you want them to work it's definitely not as good as the scratch pad functionality on, on qtile which is built in and works really well just with a couple lines of of syntax so scratch pads are a space where hyperland really needs to get better and the thing is is that even if you were to use the built-in functionality for scratch pads on a hyperland you can still only have one scratch pad now i am very odd i don't I'm one of the few people probably that require massive amounts of scratch pads. So the, the developers probably aren't going to try to do the thing that I want them to do and have multiple scratch pads, but I would really like them to have more than one. The ability to have as many as you want would be really cool. So scratch pads definitely do need to be something that works right now. I have this set up right here and this is Tilex and Tilex is 
fine. Uh, it doesn't always do the thing that you want it to do. So if, if you don't, if I don't have the cursor in the middle of the screen, like just say it's over here, you can see that the focus is actually on the window behind it. And if I go to start typing, I'm technically typing over there in that other one. And sometimes I don't notice, right? It's, well, I don't notice until I, you know, see that I'm not getting the, the text in the right place. So I then have to you know move the cursor or I have to do the key binding to move focus and then I can start using this, the Tilex. Also, Tilex is not native to Wayland. You have to have a, a environment variable in order to get it to run. Especially, well, that's not 100% true. You can use it in regular mode just fine, but it does not like the Quake mode, which is what I'm using here in order to get, you know, without doing the environment variable thing. So uh, scratch pads is probably the number one thing that I'm missing when it comes to hyperland the second thing that's not so good and this is less of a hyperland thing is the bar now you guys can see up here at the top i have a bar this is waybar and uh, i will be making a separate video on waybar uh, i don't have very many positive things to say about it so i don't even know if that video will ever come to be honest with you i don't like to do videos where are completely negative uh, even though I just did one on Wayland, which is mostly completely negative, but even then I was positive about some things, right? I changed my mind over it being ready for regular people, so I was somewhat positive there. I don't have a lot of positive things to say about Waybar. Hyperland by itself does not come with a bar, and that's not unusual. There's a lot of window managers out there on both sides of the Xorg Wayland divide that don't come with bars, and that's fine. Uh, but the thing is on, that on Xorg, when you have a window manager that doesn't come with a bar, you have a lot of options, right? You have a lot of different bars that you can use. You can use Polybar, Tint2, you can use EWW, you can use Bumblebee Bar, you can use Lemon Bar, you can use any number of different bars out there, and the, you know, just you're, you're spoiled for choice. On the Wayland side, that's not the case, right? There are a few bars that you can use. Waybar is the by far the most popular, by far the most polished experience that you're going to have in terms of bars. Uh, and that's saying something considering that it, it's not that polished. It's okay. Uh, it feels like they were trying to do the polybar thing, but they didn't quite have the, they, they didn't quite want to rip it off completely. So they decided to do their configuration. Like if I go, if I show you this, this is the Waybar configuration file. And, uh, the, it's like I said, it's kind of got the whole polybar syntax, but they've put it inside of a JSON folder or they've put it inside of a JSON, you know, syntax. And it's not great because you have to have quotation marks and you have to have the commas in the right place and stuff like that. So it's not the greatest re-implementation of polybar ever. I don't hate JSON as much as I hate YAML, but it's pretty close. Uh, it, it just makes it, it makes a lot more messy, right? Because the whole thing has to be inside of a bracket. You have to have all these quotation marks all over the place. If they could figure out a way to have their configuration file without all of that stuff, uh, they'd have a very good implementation of Polybar, honestly, because it's kind of the same. But it's also, like I said, it's just a little bit more messy than I'd prefer. Also, the documentation is hit or miss when it comes to the modules and stuff. So Waybar, not fantastic. The problem is, is that it's the best choice. EWW is confusing AF. It really is. I've tried it before. I did the live stream on it and I never got it all the way running. I, I got close, but I didn't get all the way there. And that was tinkering with it for two hours. Uh, maybe I'll probably look at it again, but we'll see. Uh, there are a few other smaller bars out there, but they're not as well developed. They're mostly brand new and they're just not full featured yet. So when it comes to bars on a Wayland compositor, specifically on Hyperland this time, you just don't have a lot of choice. And that's not great. Uh, it's just, it's not a great experience right now yet. Whereas like if you're on Xorg, you have a ton of choice on Wayland compositors and things like Hyperland. You just don't have as much choice as I'd like. Now, I think, like I said earlier, as Wayland and Hyperland get more mature, this problem is probably going to go away because we'll see more bars. We'll see more bars that work across Wayland uh, compositors, and it will just get better over time. We're just not there yet. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about before we... One more negative thing that I need to talk about, and this is... Uh, see, the thing about this is that it's not even a Wayland-specific problem. Like, for whatever reason, monitors timing out and going blank and then turning off and going to sleep is a problem on Xorg. It's a problem on Wayland. It doesn't work out well. <laughs> it's just not great. On Hyperland specifically, they don't have a tool, as far as I'm aware, for making your screens go blank. They do have a command that will do it, uh, D DPMS or whatever off, and 
uh, DPMS on will work, but then you'd have to write a script in order to get that work, and it didn't work that well for me. It actually ended up turning this monitor off completely, and then it would not turn back on, which is an interesting thing. And then I was able to use Sway Lock. No, 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 excuse me. I was able to use Sway Idle in order to get my screens to go blank, but it would only turn off one one, one monitor. It turned off this monitor. I was able to then move the mouse in order to get the monitor to come back on, but it switched positions right so uh, instead of having this monitor here the big monitor being the the primary monitor it switched to this one it wasn't great right so monitor management when come when it comes to hyperland definitely needs to be better uh, in order for me to actually use it full time because as, a, as it is right now i hate to have my monitors on all the time and yes i can reach around and press the button i'm not that lazy but it's i'd much rather have them go to sleep themselves because the computer is on all day uh, and it'd just be easier if it was automated right so that's another negative thing that i really really needs to get fixed so uh, my overall thoughts like i said pretty positive now that i've been able to use it now that i've been able to get obs to actually up and running and outside of the whole having to rebuild all of my tools that i use all the time because they all work on xorg and not on wayland the actual experience of hyperland has been pretty good and the question then becomes, am I going to continue to use it? Yeah, I probably will uh, for a little while. I, I'm going to try to get Pywall up and running and see if that will actually work because that could be fun to have up and running because I don't have a lot of, like on Qtile, I have a whole bunch of themes ready to go. I don't have that on on Hyperland yet, so I'm going to set up Pywall and see if that's fun to play around with. If I can get the monitors to go to sleep, I'm much more likely to stay on Hyperland than not. If I can't get the monitors to go to sleep, I'll probably hightail it back to Qtile, just because I know everything works over there. And that means taking off all of the Wayland specific stuff that I've been ha forced to set up in order to get you know OBS to work, in order to get Crusader to work, and all this stuff. So that'll be a process. So I won't be switching back and forth. If I have to leave Hyperland to go back to quite Qtile, it's probably be the end of my Hyperland experience. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on Hyperland, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, links for LiberPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well if you'd like to support me there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel is not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys, like I said, completely awesome. Mind blown every time I think about how many of you support me. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.